Good morning, everybody. Good morning. How are you doing? Hope you're having a great Saturday. Yes. Uh, we are actually not at the house, so we have a little bit of background noise going on today, so hopefully uh, it doesn't distract us. But anyway, want to just give this just a second. We're going to start giving some shout outs here. Good morning. Good morning. Can everybody see us? Give us a thumbs up if you can see us. There we go. All right. Good morning, Carmen. Good morning, Lakeisha. Good morning, Faye. Hallelujah. Good morning, uh, Terry. Good morning to you. Brenda, good morning to you. Ferrandis, Crystal Trinidad, good morning to you. Shanika, good morning. Uh, Brenda, Ferrandis, good morning. Good Faye, morning, everyone. good morning. Hallelujah. Let me Hallelujah. get over here. Do a couple. Madeline, good morning to you. Natifa, good morning. Cynthia, good morning. Ashley, good morning. Erica, good morning to you guys. Jerry, good morning. Elizabeth, so good to see you. Good morning. Mary Jo, good morning to my sister. Brenda Jackson, good morning. Uh, Annie, good morning. Natasha, good morning. Yalitza, good morning. Hallelujah. Delia, good morning. Good to see you last night on the broadcast. Isaiah, good morning. Amen, amen. Good morning, everyone. All right. Hopefully we can make it through this. Uh, our internet's a little bit shaky, <laughs> but good morning, you guys. We're, today is Friendship Saturday, uh, so we're talking and ministering about friends. Let's go ahead and get started, Pastor. You want to pray us in? Heavenly Father, I just thank you, Lord, right now, Father, for this day, Lord. Father, I just thank you, Father, right now, for everyone who's present. Father, I just thank you, Father, this morning for our friends, Lord. Our friends. You said we wanted friends, we should show ourselves friendly. Amen. And I just thank you, Father, right now, Father, for our agreement and love and thanksgiving for our friends today, Lord. Father, I just thank you, Father, the covenant friends, Father. Father, I thank you, Father, the friends of good influence, Father. Father, I just Amen. thank you, Father, right now for me, Lord. And I pray the blessing upon every friend this morning, Lord. It's been a great friend. To others, and I just thank you, Father, from right now in the name of Jesus, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Give me a thumbs up if you guys hear us okay. Um, I can try to move the speaker a little bit closer, but are, are you hearing us okay? Give me a thumbs up, amen. So, um, anyway, today we want to talk about friends, and there's two things I want to talk about, uh, relative to friends. Uh, well, actually, three, three things. Uh, number one, we need to understand that friend and the word friendship in the Bible is a covenant word. It's a covenant word. So it's not just somebody that you pick. It's not just somebody that you, you know, you feel good about. Um, in, 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 in our walk with God, having a friend is about somebody that the Holy Spirit reveals to us that is our friend. The Holy Spirit reveals to us that they are our friend. So um, it, it's somebody that has like kind faith. It's somebody also when you have a friend that is a believer. Um, you know, you, you can't, the Bible tells us be not unequally yoked when it comes to marriage. It's the same with friendship. Amen? Amen. It's the same with friendship. God wants us having godly friendships. So that's number one. Um, number two, uh, when we have these friendships, God wants us thankful. God wants us thankful. So, you know, when we have these friendships, when the Lord brings people into our lives that are blessing us, the Lord brings people in our lives to, to help us our lives, to help uh, encourage our lives, to help fulfill our lives, to help develop our lives. That, that's the purpose of friendship. Right. Right. A lot of times we pick friends because we enjoy their company. Right. Uh, we feel good around them or they make us laugh. Right. But that's really not the basis to pick a, a good friend. Right. Right. So today, today we want to talk about, again, thankfulness uh, and then unity. So in Ephesians chapter 1, in verse 16, uh, the Bible says this. Do not cease to give thanks for me, making mention of you in my prayer. So this is Paul talking to the church. And the first thing that he says is, I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. So Paul is literally saying that, you know, I am thankful for the people, for the friends that God has brought into my life. You know, I was thinking about this on Friday when uh, uh, we were uh, filming the show and, and, uh, it was Pastor Ezel's anniversary, and they asked us to make a, a small video clip for him. And, you know, I was thinking about Pastor Ezel and Pastor Wante and what friends they've been to me and my wife. You know, again, these are Christian people. Uh, these are people of like, kind faith. These are these are people that, that, that you know, um, believe God like we believe God. 
um, have vision from God like we have vision from God, are in pursuit of the things of God like we're in the pursuit of the things of God. So, you know, we call them our friends. We, we don't we don't really call a lot of people that covenant kind of friendship. But they they are because because of their 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 um, persistence. You know, when I think of Pastor Ezel and, and my friendship with him, I think of somebody that is just so consistent. Uh, you know, when I think of Pastor Wante, I think of somebody that's always trying to figure out, you know, always hearing from God on, you know, am I doing this right? Am I doing that right? And, and Lord, am I, Lord, am I pleasing you? Lord, are you happy with my life? So, so those are the kind of people I want around me. Right. And then, you know, we, we have, you know, Pastor Ron and Pastor Gina, so, some other friends of ours, you know, the same thing. These are people that, that, you know, we don't agree with all of our friends on everything. And we definitely don't agree with all worldly topics, how you raise your kids, how you should treat your grandchildren. You know, look, the, everybody's got their own. But the thing that we all agree on when I talk about people that are our friends is that these are people that are pursuing God. These are people after the things of God in their life. Jesus, they, they, is, Lord. Jesus is the Lord of their life. So there's never a thing that I believe we could get that far off of because we can always center back to Jesus. Amen. So he says here in Colossians uh, chapter three, this is in the Amplified. Listen to this um, from, from verses 15 to verse 17. Colossians chapter three, verses 15 to verse 17. Listen to this. And let the peace, so harmony, which, with, with, and let the peace, so harmony, which comes from Christ. Rule, act as an umpire continually in your hearts, deciding, settling the finality, all questions that arise in your minds, and that peaceful state to which, as members of Christ, one body you were also called to live and be thankful, appreciative, giving praise to God always. Let the word spoke, spoken by Christ the Messiah have its home in your hearts and minds and dwell in you. And in all his richness, as you teach and admonish and train one another in all insight and intelligence and wisdom. Teach, teach, train, and admonish one another. Keep going. Teach, train, and uh, teach and, and admonish and train one another in all insights and intelligence and wisdom. In spiritual things, as you sing songs and hymns and spiritual songs, making melody to God with his grace in your hearts. And whatever you do, no matter what it is, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus and independence and dependence upon him, his person, giving praise to God, the Father through him. So th this goes right to what I was talking about. It goes right to, to that togetherness, that, you know, how we center everything on God, how our, our relationship is centered on God. Uh, you know, if, if Pastor Ezel told me tomorrow that he was no longer uh, a believer in Christ, I, I don't really know how much of a friendship we would have because I'm not friends with him because he's my buddy. We're, we're not buddies. We're we're covenant friends. We, we have a central unifying commitment, a central unifying theme in our lives. You know, I tell people all the time I had brothers in the ministry that, that were my brothers that I, I could hang out with. But then we had brothers in, in the ministry that were my brothers because we love the same man of God and we serve the same vision. But maybe they weren't somebody. Maybe they liked fishing and I didn't like fishing. Maybe I liked hunting. So, again, you don't have to be somebody's buddy to be their covenant friend. This is where we really make this mistake. Right. We feel like we got to we got to be hangout buddies. You know, we, 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 we got to be, you know, these, these 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 hangout buddies to one another. No, we don't. A friendship in Christ can be built on, on, on the foundation of God, on the unity of God, on the pursuit of God, on the pursuit of the things of God. And as a matter of fact, I challenge you to find true friendships that are built on that because I promise you they will last longer. I promise you they will be more sustainable. I promise you you'll have a, excuse me, a lot less drama say it'll be more enjoyable right because of the word right it always brings you back even when you have a disagreement right it's that word they're throwing in everybody's heart it said keep it in your heart so 
it's always easy to just just come back into oneness. It's, it's wonderful having a godly friend. Right. And, it, and, it, and it's very important and vital as a Christian that I say this as, as we get ready to close. You need to make sure that as a believer, that you understand your relationships. Some of you have pastors that you want to be your friends. Your pastors were not called to be your friend. Now, there's a season of that relationship where it could change. Uh, you know, um, the, and the Bible talks all about that. And we're not we're not talking about that right now. But I don't care what the season comes to. Even if your pastor considers you their friend, you should always honor and respect that relationship. They're not your buddies. They can be your friend because that is a covenant word, but they're not your buddies. Um, when you have friends of the world, they're not your friends. Those are your acquaintances. Because again, friendship is a covenant word. So you got to be careful with those relationships. You got to be careful with them because you got to you got to watch who speaks into your life. You got to watch who you allow to have headspace in your in your head. Amen. Um, I was going to say, that's why serving your pastors is so important. It keeps that perspective, helps you keep that perspective. Right. That I'm not your friend. Right. I serve you. Yeah. A, a, a childhood friend of mine, John, who's on the on the broadcast from time to time, I put a post on Facebook about Pastor Poe, and he, he had I am me, and he's like, man, you know, who is that guy? You know, your, your face lights up every time you talk about him. Yeah, he, he was a difference maker in my life. Right. And Pastor Deborah still is. They are our pastors. They are the spiritual guide that God gave us on earth. You need a spiritual guide on earth and in heaven. Just like you need to understand your friendships, even your covenant friendships. Are they upward friendships? Are they downward friendships? Meaning, are these people that are going to pour into you or are you called to pour into them? You need to understand that as well. Pastor Ezel, it was called to pour into me. I wasn't called to pour into him. Now, there are times that he'll call me and there are things I'll pour in him about, but but that's not what it was. And then you have some that are just peer-to-peer -peer friendships. But I honor that friendship in an upward way. I look up to Pastor Ezel as, as, as a big brother in Christ. So you, you need to understand those things in your relationship. Um, we want to close today with saying that all this conversation about friendship leads to one thing, and it's the ultimate thing that God wants for us which is in the body of Christ, he wants unity. God wants unity. Ultimately, the reason Jesus died was to make us one big happy family. You know, I, I, I was talking to um, um, somebody last night, I'm not gonna say who, but they were having a family issue. Um, and, 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 you know, th this person loves their family and loves these people in their family, but these people are always, they're, they're not spiritual people. They're not people that are connected to God. I'm not saying they're not saved. They're, they're just not, they're not living their life after Christ. And I was telling this person, you know, you need to get on with, you're not a doormat. You're not a doormat. You, you, you are, I don't, just because they're miserable with their life. Don't allow people to call and get in your head. I don't allow people to call and get in my head. I have people always trying to tell me I should do this and I should do that. No, I'm led by the Holy Spirit. People think just because something's right to them in their eyes, that makes it righteous. The only thing that's righteous is what God tells you to do. Right. Because if you do something out of your own will, that's you doing it. That's not God telling you to do it. So you need to think about that. You need to be in prayer about that. And some people, you just need to not even take their phone call. God's giving you your life. We deal with this a lot. So I want to close in unity. And again, you can't be in unity with somebody that's not in Christ. And anything that keeps you, and it's so important because I know you said, well, how, why, why wouldn't you take the call? Because it's so important that you stay in peace. Yeah. When Don't let not, them disturb you. Right. Because when you're not in peace, now you're subject to sin. Right. Now you're getting in the flesh. Right. And it just doesn't help your walk. Right. And, 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 and me personally, I got to do this all the time because, because man, I got to stay in prayer. Because I'm easy to get, get slip over there, and I can't let myself do that. God doesn't want me doing that. God wants me staying focused on the mission. What has God called you to do that he wants you focused on? Don't let people become a distraction. 
Bring your friends close to you that encourage you, that lift you up, that tell, not, not only just encourage you, but tell you truth about you as well. Amen. You need people that are going to tell you truth and help you grow. Sometimes that's not encouraging. Sometimes that's not fun. But you got to have those real friends as well. So in 1 Corinthians, we're going to close in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. And when we get done with this, I want to share something with you as well. It, it says this. But I urge and entreat you, brethren, by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you be perfect in harmony and full agreement in what you say, and that there be no dissensions and fractions and or divisions among you, but that you be perfectly united in your common understanding and in your opinions and judgment. So he tells us right here, right here, that we need to be united. We need to be together. We need, we, we need to think alike relative and we need to speak alike relative to the word of God. And that's why I went back to what I was telling you about Pastor Wante and Pastor Ezel. You know, if Pastor Wante and I have a discussion, it always goes back to being unified around what God's word says. Right. You know, I, I did some one time. I remember I put a post on Facebook and it challenged her. And she called me. You know what I told her? I said, I'll take it down if it bothers you. She's my friend. There, I honor them. I respect them. I meant that. Why? Because it's important. Why? Because these are godly people. These aren't just people. These are godly people. Okay. It's a covenant. So you need to understand that. Amen. Um, clo in closing the day, I want to tell you guys, listen, yesterday was Giving Friday. I want to thank everybody that gave. Man, we are so thankful. We're so appreciative. And I'm praying that you give and sow your seed. Believing God for the sacrificial offering on December the 6th. Man, we're believing God to go on television next year. Uh, and listen, it's going to require resources. I just got the bill, $20,000 to do the lighting. Everything's expensive. But you know what? God is able. He's got it all. And listen, we're not asking you to do anything unnatural. We're just asking you to sow your seed and believe God to sow a seed on December the 6th. Believe God to bring the money in. We're not asking you to go in your savings. We're not asking you to do any of that. We're just saying sow a seed. And as you sow, believe God that he'll bring unexpected income. And I believe me, he will do it for you. He'll bring money you never thought was coming. And remember, it's not about the amount. It's about your heart. Are you doing what God told you to do? And are you believing God? So just believe God. We love you. We love you. We love you. Enjoy your weekend. Tomorrow is Sunday. Man, be in prayer about Sunday. Be in prayer about being in the house of worship. Be in prayer about being before the Lord. Be in prayer about hearing a word from God. Man, God is saying great things. God is speaking. Be in prayer. Amen. We love you. We love you. We love you. It's Pastor Nick, Pastor Brandy. Until tomorrow saying, enjoy life.